Hello friends, welcome back to OK Java. Guys, in this video, we'll continue with the REST API interview questions. All right, so let's begin the video. All right, guys. So the question is, what are the differences between put and post in REST? Okay. So guys, by now you know that post is to create a new resource, and put function is to update an existing resource. So put will basically replaces the existing values with the new one. Okay. Next difference. Put is idempotent. What does it mean? It means if you perform put operation multiple times, the result will remain same. Okay, but this is not the case with the post. Post is not idempotent because the idea behind post is to create a new resource. So every time if you are making a post call, it means you are adding a new resource to the server. So you will get a new data, new result. Okay. Now next difference. Put method can be cached. So the result of put can be cached. To to avoid the response time for the next call, but this is not the case with the post method. You cannot cache the response of post. Why? Because every time you perform a post call, the result will be different. So you can't cache the the response of post method. Okay. We use update query in put. So while making a put call, basically in the backend we are using update SQL. But in case of post, we are using create SQL. To insert a record into the database. Okay, the endpoint to perform the put operation will have a value, an ID in the end. For example, I want to update user details where ID equals to one. Okay, but in case of post, you will not have that ID. In case if you have to update, say for example, there are users having multiple posts and you want to update a particular post, so your endpoint would look something like this: users, then user ID one. Slash post and then slash post ID. But at the other end, to perform the post call, say for example, I want to create a new post, right? So my uh, URI would be like this: localhost eight zero zero slash users. Then ID user ID one two three like that slash post. That I am going to create a new post. All it is next should we make the resources that set explicitly if they are made to share across multiple clients? So the answer is. There is no need to explicitly making the resources thread set. Why? Because upon every request, new resource instances are created, which makes them thread set by default. So you don't have to take any action. By default, they are thread set. Next question: What is payload in terms of RESTful web services? So guys, payload refers to the data that passes in the request body. Payload can be sent only in POST methods as part of the request body. It is not the same as request parameter. Okay, so guys, request parameter is different thing, and payload is different thing. For example, you want to create a new record into the database, right? So you will pass the object information like object ID, a first name, last name, email, the other attributes, right? So that particular thing is called payload. Okay, let me show you guys one second. So guys, see here, I am making a POST call. This particular URI, and if I go to request body, right? So this content is known as payload, right? So payload is always with the post call only, okay? And if I go and see this value, like right? student slash, can you get me the record where ID equals to one, right? So this particular thing is called request parameter, path variables, right? So this is the parameter, which is different from the payload, okay? Now there are two things actually. We have got path variables. We have got query parameters. So, but that's different. So, query parameters or path variables are not uh, same as uh, payload. Okay. I hope this is clear, guys. So, what you have to remember is payload can be sent only in POST methods as part of the request body, and it is not same as the request parameters. All right. Next, is it possible to send payload in GET and DELETE methods? So, the answer is no. The payload is not the same as the request parameter. Hence, it is not possible to send payload data in these methods. Okay, so you can't pass payload with the get and delete. Remember, payload is different from request parameter. All right, guys. Next is, what is the maximum payload size that can be set in POST methods? Theoretically, there is no restriction on the size of the payload that can be sent. But one must remember that the greater the size of the payload, the larger would be the bandwidth consumption and time taken to process the request. So that can impact the server performance, right? So if the greater the size payload, so it will take more bandwidth. So your processor, your response from your server 
may have some impact okay next how can you test restful web services restful web services there are two ways to do this one is as i have explained just now postman second you can use swagger api so postman as you know it provides many features to perform rest operations like sending requests to endpoints and so the response which can be converted to json or xml and also provide features to inspect request parameters like headers query parameters and also the response headers sugar we can use sugar to perform whatever is done by postman but apart from that it also provides the facility of documentation of the endpoints if you want to create the documentation of your rest api endpoints go and make use of the sugar it will create the documentation for you okay so we can use tools like jmeter for performance and load testing of rest apis next question can you name few annotations so guys so far we have discussed get post put delete all these right there are many more annotations which rest api provides like we have got at the path variable or at the path param so this is to extract the parameter from the uri at the query param or at the request param to extract the query parameters from the uri guys if you want to know more about these annotations what you can do is we already have a video on the channel let me show you the video so guys if you see here at the rate request param annotation in this video i have discussed everything all about at the rate request param annotation okay similarly in this video i have discussed everything about at the rate path variable okay so i want you to watch these two videos to understand what exactly at the rate path variable annotation can do and this is for at the rate request param annotation all right guys then next one is at the rate produces and at the rate consumes so this is specify the media type of the resource representation for example if you are going to produce xml or json data that you can specify or if you are going to consume xml or json you can specify okay guys uh, next question is at the rate controller versus at the rate rest controller so guys again i am not going to cover this one here because there is already a video let me show you where you can find the detailed video on at the rate rest controller versus at the rate controller annotation okay so guys here is the detailed video in which i have discussed about at the rate controller versus at the rate rest controller annotation okay so i want you to watch this video to fully understand the differences between these two annotations all right next is at the rate path variable versus at the rate request param so guys i have just explained we already have video here guys you can watch these two videos to fully understand the differences between at the rate path variable and at the rate request param annotation okay all right guys next question is define http message converter in terms of spring rest all right guys so for very first thing http message converter is an interface what it does it basically perform the conversion conversion of data say for example your object in json format or in xml format but in your code you need to have that value as an object right so the conversion between these two let me show you one second let's go to postman guys to understand this http message format converter what it does so what do you see here guys here from the client from the rest client we are passing our object in json format but to deal with this data right you need to have an object right so you want to have an object student object created for you so that you can perform the insertion operation right so the conversion conversion of this particular data json to your object is done by http message converter and it also does the reverse so for example if i'm fetching get right so let me hit this particular endpoint what do i see i have got get uh, the data student object in json format but in my code i am passing the object i am passing student object but in the outcome i am getting json values so this conversion between from json to object and object to json is done by http message converter okay so this is not limited to json you can pass uh, xml values as well like you, you pass your object in xml format and then the message converter will convert that value into the java object in a poso class and while getting the response same can be done you pass the java object your poso class this message converter will convert the values into the xml tags i hope you guys are getting it all right guys so if you see here spring rest uses the http message converter for converting responses to various data formats like json xml okay so spring makes use of the accept header to determine the type of the, the content the client expects so in the request accept header you will mention the type of the value that you are expecting like json or xml 
Based on this, Spring would find the registered message converter interface that is capable of this conversion. So this is internet process. But what you must know is HTTP message converter. First of all, it is an interface. And it is responsible for converging the request and response to various data formats like JSON and all right guys all right guys thank you for watching please do subscribe my channel and share with your friends